Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. My apologies uh, to all of you who've been waiting to join me. Um, I've had a really busy day, uh, full of appointments. A few appointments uh, ran really late, and so I usually do these videos live on Facebook at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. But it's well past six o'clock today, so my apologies to all of you. Uh, and thanks uh, for all, all of you who are joining me live, of course. And for those who join me a little bit later on YouTube, um, I post these videos after they've been uh, produced on Facebook Live onto YouTube. So welcome all of you um, in whatever format you're watching today's video. So uh, today I brought together a really interesting group of prints to show all of you. Um, I've been fortunate enough to pick up a complete uh, set of 36 uh, Kabuki actor portraits by Natori Shinsen. And so I thought today would be a good opportunity to, to show you a sampling of the prints in this uh, set and, and kind of show you how they were originally issued and with the original sort of um, folders that the the prints were um, issued in. So um, it's not something you normally see. Um, it is a really wonderful group in great condition, a perfect example of what they should look like. So, you know, we'll have a look at what we have today. So thank you again for joining me. And without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So as always, I like to pan out so you could see the table and you could see what, what we'll be discussing today. So I pulled out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten portraits from Natori Shinsen's uh, 36 um, um, actor portrait series. So um, I should point out that Natori Shinsen was a 20th century Shinhanka artist. He basically was continuing on the tradition of kabuki actor portraits. Uh, and this tradition really started during the Edo period where uh, prints were produced celebrating uh, the more important kabuki actors. Um, and that, that also occurred in Osaka, by the way. Osaka often gets um, overlooked in terms of actor portraits, but it was something that was happening both in Osaka and in Tokyo. And there were many um, artists producing portraits of actors um, in particular roles. And, you know, of course, like any, any um, following of, of, of people who were interested in, in, in the theater, they, there was a large followings for particular actors. Uh, there was also interest in particular roles. And, and so, you know, during the Edo period, certainly it was something that was celebrated and there was a huge fan base for it. And in the 20th century, Watanabe, sort of Watanabe, the, the publisher who I've spoken quite a bit about in the past, um, sort of rekindled the interest in Japanese prints by reviving um, Edo period um, with black print subjects. So he, of course, hired um, artists like Shinsui to produce Bijinga or Portraits of Beautiful Women. He hired artists like Hasui for, uh, for landscapes. And Shinsen um, arguably is the most important kabuki actor portrait artist of the 20th century in Japan. And he certainly worked with Watanabe. He worked with him early on, before the earthquake, producing two portraits. And um, after the earthquake, um, he was actually commissioned by the publisher Kikuchi. And um, that sort of um, partnership uh, sort of fell through and Watanabe um, picked up the, the, the project. And this set, this set of 36 portraits of actors in various roles is the series that Shinsen produced originally for Kikuchi, but that Watanabe um, sort of picked up. And we are very happy that he did because some of these designs are some of the most iconic kabuki actor portraits of the uh, 20th century in Japan. And so there, there were several woodblock print 
artists um, interested in kabuki actors. Um, and so, you know, to, today's point is not to really name all of them. There's several, I mean, dozens, quite frankly. And a lot of them are, are not very well known outside of Japan. But Shinsen certainly was the most, or one of the most important, and I, I believe he's the, the single most important artist that revived the genre and really brought uh, a larger collecting base for 20th century uh, kabuki actor portraits. And so, you know, what I, I'm going to do is we'll start at the other end of the table. And in, uh, there isn't too much time in terms of discussing each work and what actor uh, is portrayed in each design. Instead, I just want to show just the quality of these prints and, and just highlight the subjects and, and, and how they're portrayed which in, which within each design. So for example, this work is fantastic. It's a, it's a portrait, as, as all of these are, but there's a lot of attention to the background. There's silver mica that shimmers. Uh, I'm going to move it print around so you could see how beautiful the background is and there's a really strong sense of realism in this design uh, you could uh, you could almost sense the the kabuki actor sort of kind of coming to life um, and almost his his face and head almost protrude um, beyond the confines of the design it's really a striking work and in, in within um, the the foreground we get a beautiful sense of of, of the textiles uh, of that make up the actor's kimono and his headdress here and then the collar here and the kimono all of these materials are sort of rendered in this print with with attention to detail so you almost get a tactile feel for each part of the of the of the outfit that the actor is wearing. And of course, the background has that wonderful silver mica that adds a really wonderful dramatic uh, effect to it. And um, I should point out here, well, we'll move on to a few others and then I could show you the, the folders. But in, in this design, uh, we have another Kabuki actor. And um, I should point out that in the Kabuki theater, all of the roles for all, um, of the subjects are portrayed by, by men. So they're played by men. There are no female uh, actors. And so, you know, the, the roles of female figures are all played by men. And in this case, uh, we do have an onagata, uh, meaning uh, a, a male actor portraying a female role. And, uh, you know, what we have here, again, the background is full of silver mica. Let me see if I can move the uh, the prints you could see how the background shimmers and a uh, wonderful attention has been has been focused on the various uh, qualities within the kimono uh, there's a couple kimonos that the actor is wearing and then the outer kimono and you can like the other uh, print we just discussed you really get a sense of the different um, textiles used um, the different textures um, within the um, the dress of the actor, and of course this design has this actor in this really interesting pose, kind of looking out towards to the right of the viewer in this sort of dramatic um, pose, such as the the previous one. Both of them, you you could really see the the sense of drama in the um, the design. So. Uh, moving quickly, I'll sh show in a different format. This, so this is a full-figured um, portrait of an actor. This is another onagata. So it's a male um, actor portraying a female role. And um, she is carrying a drum. And also we see that she's carrying a sword. And of course, this these are all, I'm sure, parts of... The storyline that this role um, is um, portraying, but in this case, you see how beautiful the kimono has been treated with this wonderful red, and then the 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 inner kimono that comes out is done in this really wonderful star uh, shaped uh, pattern, 
and it's embossed. I, you can't really tell um, from my video, but it is. And the background has this really wonderful sort of, uh, it's, it's almost kind of a smoky quality to it produced by the Beren uh, or the printing implement that scrapes the surface of the print and, and produces that, that really wonderful texture in the background. Uh, moving along, we have another portrait of an actor in a dramatic pose looking out left towards the, the, um, the viewer. And the background, again, on this design is beautifully printed with this silver mica. And the, there's, of course, this wonderful face makeup that the actor is wearing. And it's printed really beautifully. To, it looks very convincingly as if it was applied by hand as face makeup is. So, you know, the, the printing on this is, you know, what you would expect by Watanabe's expert um, uh, you know, at craftsmen who were able to carve these designs and print these impressions in such quality. So I'm going to move along, and we have here another actor in a role of a, a female role, and again another onagata. And the printing here, I just want to highlight the hair that the way that the hair was printed, the the hairline around by the forehead that's really wonderfully produced with this really light brush that creates this bokashi around the forehead. And of course, the, the face is printed with such a delicate hand. The fine lines of the nose are done with just basically a very light carving of the block. It's just beautiful. And the hair is printed in various stages and there's several overprintings to achieve this effect in, in the hair. And of course the background we have the, uh, this Beren work um, in the background but in this case it's done with a kind of like a, a beautiful blue lavender color and of course the the kimono which is beautifully rendered in all of these intricate designs it's just it's astounding to be able to see these prints in such great condition with such fresh colors so we could appreciate how they were originally issued here on this design uh, i actually I really like this design the 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 kimono of this figure is embossed with this sort of cloud pattern and then overprinted with mica. It's really beautifully done. And then we, of course, have the, the face of the actor, which is, again, um, you'll see that the red, pig, red pigment around the eyes is sort of rendered in a way where it looks like it's done by hand, which is, I think, really, really neat. And here we see this beautiful, soft application of pink around the fingertips and around the edge of the hand and of course you know this these are techniques that are done by expert printers to really add this wonderful texture and and i mean the the printing effects here are just it's just supreme i mean i mean i i just think the they showcase watanabe's uh you know artisans uh, and and really show what they were capable of i also want to highlight the hair here you see those fine lines that accentuate the hair in the way that it's been rendered up i mean you could see how the hair is spiked up at the edge it's really cool No, this is one of the more famous designs from this uh, series. It has an actor sort of lost in, in thoughts, carrying an umbrella in the middle of a snowstorm, or at, at the very least, a snowfall. In the background, the Beren work that's creating this sort of smoky, atmospheric quality with the gray in the background is beautifully done. The the kimono again is done so wonderful in the sense that you could see the contrast of the material that is on the top of the actor. Um, and this is sort of the outer kimono, which is a thicker uh, cloth or th a thicker textile versus the other layers of the kimonos he's wearing and how different they, they appear. I think that's really neat. And of course, 
the hair has been done very carefully. Yeah, I mean, this is a really, really wonderful design. I'll move on to the, the next work. This is also a pretty famous uh, design that's quite sought after. Uh, again, uh, an actor with uh, a red pigment on his face done in such a way that it actually looks, again, applied by hand. Watanabe's artisans are really good at doing that. And the blue here with the bokashi around the, the eyebrows, I mean, such a dramatic design. And of course, the headdress here, look at the amount of carving that was required to create such a dramatic effect to the, to the hair. And then in the, this, this particular design has silver mica within the kimono, and then the kimono itself also has embossing. And you see, you see this almost like wave, uh, watery kind of uh, effect to the, the lines that move throughout the kimono. I almost, is that a fish? I'm trying to figure out if I am seeing even if there's fish in the design or it's just kind of a pattern, but it's really cool. You know, you could see all of the minute details on these particular prints and, and you can tell no expense was spared. These were lavishly done with all of the techniques possible and, and available at at Watanabe's studio, so they were his artisans were carving these blocks with such intricate expertise, and then his printers were able to interpret the those fine lines and print something this fine. I, I, I just I think what we're looking at is some of the finest printing um, that we we find in twentieth century actors actor portraits. So on this design, I, I like this design quite a bit. We have a, an actor sort of looking towards the right. And most of these designs, I don't think there's one design actually that has the actor looking directly at the viewer. And I think th the reason for that is that you can interpret each design as a moment within the, the drama that they're performing. And so they're very much caught in, in the play and their, their, their attention is pretty much within the context of what is happening to each character. And so we don't have these actors that are looking dead at, at the viewer. In some cases, when we think about kabuki actor portraits of the Edo period, there were many that were produced. Um, of course, the eyes are always done in such a dramatic fashion, but sometimes there's a lot of the designs where the, the viewer, the, the actor is looking at the viewer, but these are all portraits that sort of highlight an actor directly participating within the, the drama that's unfolding. And I think that's really neat. So in the background here, we have this really wonderful design of autumn leaves and wind that is very intricate um, and just stunning. And then of course, the hair here is done in such a beautiful way. The printing of the forehead. This is uh, the blue shading is to be interpreted as if this is an area where where the actor shaved his head, or it was the fashion of the time, and so this is an area that's freshly shaven. So that's how you would interpret that. And of course, the kimono here is so finely done. And the last work. Here, this is a really dramatic design. Um, the the in all of all of these, the eyes on this one mostly resemble sort of the the eyes of Edo period kabuki actors. You can almost see uh, the eyes kind of being cross-eyed. Not 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 exactly the cross-eyed eyes of 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 a Toei Kuni the Third or Kunisada design, but it, it is they are sort of fixated in such a uh, way or you could see that the whoever the actor is looking at it, it, he's looking at him in a very intense way and and the object of his attention is right near him and uh, of course the background here is like the others done in a really interesting um, gray with the Beren work in the background 
the hair there is finely done like the others. The shading around the eye is very subtle, but also very powerful. You can see the bokashi around the the eyebrows, the, around the eyes. You see the thicker application of pigment and the blue around the the chin, which, you know, as I said, inter- should be interpreted as a freshly shaven area. And all of these designs are so striking. I just actually picked 10, almost at random. I was just going through the set and pulling these. Of course, a couple of these are the more famous designs, but the the entire series of 36 portraits, you could say that almost every single design is a fantastic work. And I, I, I really enjoyed them. And again, um, when, you're, when you're thinking of 20th century kabuki actor portraits, Shinsen, Notori Shinsen, is one of the top artists that you really think about. So I'm going to zoom in on these portraits so you could have a closer look. Oh, I should also point out, um, so all of these prints, they, they are part of a complete set that I'm fortunate to have. You know, this is the original folder and all, every single print was issued with, a, uh, where, with their own individual folder with the particular title, the name of the, um, the Kabuki actor and the role. Um, and so that's, this label is a paper label that's been printed with that information. This is woodblock printed and it looks like calligraphy, but it is in fact uh, printed. And this is, you know, basically the folder. It's um, just a sheet of paper that's been folded in half. And I've included this glassine paper um, so that each print, um, when they're housed in the folder, has a sheet of glassine over it. So some of these prints have mica, silver mica on it, and the glassine paper helps prevent loss of mica. Um, and also, I should point out, this is the original folio where all of these prints um were once housed. I mean, I keep everything together. And of course, you know, just being able to see the original folio is really neat. And what we have here is the the moans or the the symbol or crests that are on the kimonos of all of the actors. So each actor would have a moan or the moans are also a reference to the particular um, characters that are in the kabuki plays so um you know it's just kind of cool to be able to see the the variety of moons that are that make up the folio that's really cool touch i think and the other thing i want to point out before we go is that there are two shinsen books um there's this this book here that of course highlights uh some of his paintings as well as his as his prints, um, and so of course all of the the prints that he produced are illustrated in this uh, book in color. But there all there's also a, a good amount of paintings. Um, he produced a lot of uh, sumi e and 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 Japanese mineral pigment on paper and on silk as scrolls. So a lot of them are illustrated there. And this book is an earlier exhibition uh, catalog um, that just highlights, most, most of this book just shows the prints. Some paintings, but mostly just the, the, the prints. Both books are excellent. Um, this, is, this book base essentially replaces the earlier book, and I have this book available in my bookstore if uh, you should be interested. So I'll, I'll zoom in one last time on a few further uh, designed so you can sort of appreciate the wonderful printing.
Now, all of these are Oban in size, meaning they're roughly just slightly larger than a sheet of paper. Um, so, you know, that gives you a sense of what you're looking at if you're not familiar with uh, Japanese prints. In fact, I actually have a sheet of paper here. They're, they're, this will give you a sense, actually a bit larger than that. Um, I always think of them as a kind of a sheet of paper, but when I have something in front of me, I suppose um, it's good to compare. So they're, they're, they're uh, about, what, what, what would I say? Um, about 10 by 12 maybe or so. So, you know, 10 by 14 um, inches. And so they're a good size, um, a good good size work of art um, that really, uh, I, I think, showcases uh, the portraits of 20th century actors um, quite well. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me in today's Woodblock Wednesday, where we uh, explored the world of 20th century kabuki actor portraits by Notori Shinsen. And, um, you know, I thought it would uh, be a great opportunity to show all of you because uh, how often you see these prints sold individually. Um, and of course, they were issued uh, individually, but they were also issued as a set. And it's really cool to be able to see the prints in their original folders, paper folders, with the titles, as, as I showed you. And then, of course, the original folio that housed everything. So it's a really neat thing to see. Um, I want to thank all of you um, for joining me. And I'm very happy to share all of this with all of you. And I just want to point out for those of you joining on YouTube that at this uh, video is pr produced live on Facebook and, of course, archived on my website and on YouTube. Uh, my website is collectingjapaneseprints.com. And um, I want to thank all of you. Every Wednesday, uh, we'll, we'll do this again. And um, a few things, uh, you know, I'm working on a new exhibition um, from my website that will go up in a couple, in a few weeks. So I'm hoping two to three weeks uh, we'll we'll be discussing a, a nice new group of 20th century Japanese prints. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and I want to thank all of you. Thank you for joining me. It's a, it's a new year. Um, of course, be careful, all of you. Um, you know, so I live in Chicago and the, the numbers are quite high for COVID and everything. So I hope all of you are taking the precautions necessary. Uh, I am. I've decided not to see my... Um, my stylist so hence the hats <laughs> it's been um a few months since i've been but uh everyone needs to do what they need to do to stay safe so i'm hoping all of you are doing that and of course i've uh, uh a huge uh, group of of videos I, mean, I have almost a hundred now on whitblock wednesday maybe that'll help you pass the time if you're not doing anything on a weekend and of course i have some of my past seminars archived um, on my website so that's hours and hours of hours of educational material on Japanese prints and paintings. So I hope you're able to take advantage of that. Um, so again, thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, bye-bye.